Nostalgia. How long has that been around, eh? Hey, 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 hey. You talking to me? Did you have a brain tumor for breakfast? Well, who the hell else are you talking? You talking to me? No, funny how. I mean, funny like a clown. I'm Peter Vinkman. We all go a little mad sometimes. Well, who doesn't spend time with this family? Yeah. Hot. I'm kind of a big deal. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers! I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! Hey, it's frame by frame, everybody. Yes! Woo! Frame by frame. We've never opened the crowd that goes, before. The crowd goes wild. <laughs> Insert sound effects of a crowd. Yeah, my mum goes wild. Yay. And she does an RTD podcast. Yeah. <laughs> So I, I can't wait. This is going to be a great, uh, great podcast. We're, we're we're cheering up a little bit after last week's, uh, um, <laughs> yeah, silent running, yeah, si- silent, the, the, the silent depression viewing. fun. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it, I mean, it was a beautiful podcast actually. I I, I did enjoy listening to it again because it, yeah, it, it, yeah. It, it, there's a lot of heart in that. But now, now we need to kind of remove that heart stamp on it and and, and make <laughs> make it go away with some really stupid. stupid. Yeah, well, I, I think what what I need is some sort of nostalgia just to bring me out of the silent running funk. You know what? And I think it's it's time for us to watch and talk about. Go for it. Beverly Hills 90210. No, 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 no. Maybe a film that maybe uses that as a quote. The Beverly Hillbillies? No, 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 no. Beverly Hills Brats? No, no, I'm not, no. Beverly Hills Chihuahua? Uh, no, no, no. Oh, I got it, I got it, I got it. it it's it's, it's got to be this one. Beverly Hills Chihuahua 2. Ah, uh, let's, yes. <laughs> Beverly Hills Family Robinson? Uh, no. Beverly Hills, Madam. Saucy. I don't oh. oh, Beverly Hills Ninja. Which is not Ninja. The action that I'm doing right now that, that resembles somebody who's actually stuck in a. <laughs> yeah, it's the Beverly Hills stroke. <laughs> the Beverly Hills, get me out of this coffin. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um. Down and Out in Beverly Hills. Now that's a good film. <laughs> Is it now? Let's talk about it. Okay. Is that got Richard Dreyfuss in it? Does that mean I have to click on the link? Uh, yeah, it yeah. does. Richard Dreyfuss, yeah. Nick Nolte, Bette Middle. Yeah, yeah, Nick Nolte is um, he's a uh, uh, like a, um, a, a dude on off the streets, and I think he somehow gets took in or something. I watched it a long time ago, but I remember it actually being quite good and funny. So basically, it's a funny film that about somebody who's not from Beverly Hills or who's not uh, native to Beverly Hills, who comes into Beverly Hills and st- it shakes everything up. Yeah, you know, like a sort of fish out of water. You know what? We really need to start talking about the real nostalgia in the room. Scenes from a class struggle in Beverly Hills. Ah, oh, that's the one. No, 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 Top Cat and the Beverly Hill Cats. Top Cat and the Beverly Hills Cats. <laughs> Beverly's Hills. Beverly's Hills. <laughs> I just made that one. Wow. Up. Spot. Let's make a, let's, let's get a porn title in here somehow. <laughs> 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 Beverly's Hills. <laughs> I climbed up the hill to came down a mountain. <laughs> uh, no, no, no. Okay, let's get real now. Um, we all know that we're here to mourn the loss of Axel Foley. <laughs> <laughs> Beverly Hills Cup. We got the <laughs> Beverly Hills Cup. No, it's Beverly Hills Cup Axel F, which is brand new, brand, brand new movie. New. Brand new, and then <clears throat> a big slice of '80s nostalgia. Yeah, coming at you like a shark with knees. Coming at you like a jar of geritol for your yeah arthritic. <laughs> right, my joke, my joke. Okay, nostalgia. How long has that been around?
<laughs> yeah, baby, that's funny. Yeah, that's a good. Uh, yeah, thanks. Nostalgia. I actually think it's. I think Hubble it's a little bit. been around. That is a, actually very good. That, that's on the poster. Oh, thank you. I actually think it might be a Bill Bailey quote. I think he did said it first, <gasps> but but who oh, but who knows? Bill's not here. Bill's not watching. He, no, well, we don't know. He might be. He might be. Oh, I can't wait for those frame by frame guys to talk about Beverly Hills Cop. <laughs> yeah, Axel <laughs> Foley, Axel F. Yeah. Oh, Beverly Hills Ninja. Gosh. Yeah. Uh, so. <laughs> all right. So Beverly Hills Cop as Axel F is the fourth in a series of films. Yes. Not from the same director. No, in fact, this new one is a first-time director, isn't it? Yeah. They usually kind yeah. of go for veteran directors in all of these. Yeah, but not this guy. Michael He's Bond. done a good job of sort of, you know, bringing the 80s nostalgia back. You know, it's sort of, it's got the look and feel of an 80s film, sort of. I know, I know. it kind of, yeah, it, it's, it's basically... You know, it's like when someone when when people make Star Wars movies, you 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 make it look and feel like a Star Wars film, because yeah, because of, of how it looks, and you know, sometimes when you get sequels, it doesn't do that, it doesn't capture that. But this scene seems to, it, it it makes it makes Detroit look blue, cold. Yeah, because Michigan is a cold state. You know, that's the whole idea. It's it's way up there in the. You know, it's shaped like a mitten. <laughs> it's a weird, <laughs> it's a weird-looking state. And then to 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 go all the way to Beverly Hills. I mean, it, that's that's the whole dream of the first movie was to to get that black cop into bit into uh, California. Mm. And for it to be a culture shock, it's it's a fish out of water show. Yeah, and then him to be like more savvy and streetwise than the Beverly Hills cops and. To... Yeah. Be funny and ooh, yay! But the, yeah. uh, and you know, sh shall we go back in time? No, 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 no. Hang on, hold on, hold, hold oh, on. Be careful! Be hold careful! Oh, power, it power it down! Power it down! Nineteen eighty-four. <laughs> Don't you start that machine? Nineteen eighty-four. Stop it! <laughs> Trigger happy time machine. <laughs> Beverly That's Hills, a film. Beverly Hills Cop came out in as a, as an action comedy when everywhere around them there was just action films. Yeah. Now, I was watching Mr. Yeah. Murphy mm. being um, interviewed on probably I might be Fallon and it's on Fallon, and he was saying I don't know how true this is because it can't be, but in 1984 he was saying no one had really done action comedy before. That's that's very untrue. He said exactly the same thing on the Today Show. That was his brief. That was his yeah. brief that he. I'd yeah. argue Jackie Chan was doing it before him. Arguably, definitely, Jackie Chan was doing it before him, and yeah. even he was doing it before him. Eddie Murphy yeah. did uh, Forty Eight Hours in nineteen eighty two. Was that before this? Yeah, nineteen eighty two. Oh well, obviously it was right. Bloody hell! Well, that was, that no was idea, a buddy though. action comedy. I mean, it wasn't a cop. He, he was. Um, I think he's far from being a cop in that. I think he was a. Uh... Yeah, he was a criminal, wasn't he? Was he? A criminal. he was a criminal. Yeah, Nick yeah, Nancy but. But yeah. action comedies have been around. You know. Yeah, like Buster Keaton. <laughs> I guess. Yeah. I guess. Harold Lloyd. You know what I mean? I know the silent film era, but it's still action. Creating comedy. comedy. Action co yeah, uh, and it's yeah. Uh, it, it happened again recently with uh, Star Trek Discovery, where they where the they said uh, about the Black Drink, Captain. Drinking game. Drinking game. Star Every time you mention Star Trek, everyone has to take a shot. <laughs> it, it's Star Trek Discovery, where they said that she she was the first Black Captain of a starship, and it's like no Star Trek mm. Four, there was a Black Captain. Yeah, uh, it might not have been the, the the main character, but there was still a black captain, a, a, a woman yeah. captain, and and it's like they were, she got a big clap for saying that, and I was like thinking, no, you're wrong, but I, I'll still clap, you know, it's still, it's still a great, it's still a good thing. People like to say that they are the first to do something, and yeah. uh, and the thing is about the the nature of of media is that it seems as though nowadays you can say anything, and it be not contested 
it's not mm. it's like no 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 you because can, you can't contest it nobody nobody dares to contest and say no it's not the first but anyway wouldn't it have been good though if followed it went no 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 <laughs> Yeah, wouldn't it be great if people actually did this? Actually yeah. said, well, hang on. But that's the, the nature, uh, especially in America, uh, 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 media in, in the States, everything is kind of just taken as, oh, oh. But then nobody goes, wait a minute. Is that true? Yeah. Wait a second. You know, nobody ever calls bullshit because... Every, every, oh, I don't know why that isn't. You know, maybe that's just a British thing. Maybe we're just driven to be jaded into. Yeah, but I seriously doubt if uh, Eddie Murphy's on Jonathan Ross and he says, "Yeah, well, we were the first to do the action comedy," and he went, "No, you weren't." <laughs> Wait a Ross minute! Was... Wait a minute! Whoa, whoa, Wait, whoa, whoa! Wait a minute! You lying bastard! <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I think it's just yeah. So what I'm better I guess I'm saying is we're just as bad here. Exactly, exactly. But yeah, yeah. Yeah, we probably do. Yeah, but um, it, it's yeah, it's. But the, it's a, the original Bill the Old Cops. Is, it's a great film. It is a great film, and it was really funny. You know, maybe you've not ever seen anything quite like that. You know, this yeah. fast talking, streetwise. But it's always about what's happening in, in 1984. I mean, it was Terminator, it was canon movies, everything was action, blockbuster, boom, 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 serious. So I, I get that when, you, when you're a needle in a haystack of all this stuff, then you're going to stand out and say that, that, you, that this feels like a pioneer moment. Mm. So, uh, you know, so we'll, we'll let them have it. We'll, we'll just say that in, in, the, in the big firestorm that was action movies in 1984, yeah, his was different. Beverly Hills Cup was special. Yeah. And it, but it didn't. It doesn't do too much. It, it, the thing about Beverly Hills Cup is that it, it, it's never tried hard to break from its format, formula, formula. It's by the numbers. Yes. Yeah, I'd say so. Well, did the first one sort of create the template, and they just repeated it? Pretty much. Whether it was uh, a reliable template for number three, um, it certainly seemed like they played it safe for number four. Yeah, I mean, like, number three, weirdly, is probably the one I've seen the most. Yeah. Because it came out Else some the video. Wall! Else the wall! <laughs> well, it came out when I was renting videos all the time. Yeah. So, it as it was just, yeah, it just happened to be new. Yeah. So I, I, re I rented out a lot, and and it was yeah. cool. It seemed cool when it w when it came out because it's like a, a Beverly Hills Cut movie. Yeah, you know, and it probably I think I probably to... saw that before I saw one and two, maybe. Possibly, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I and... think I saw number two first, right before seeing one, which kind of usually the thing for me was to see the the sequel to most movies. Like I saw Die Hard two before I saw Die Hard one. We all know what we should have done Alien is wait for uh, yeah Beverly Hills Cop made five and six, and then we could have watched Beverly Hills Cop four, five, six, and then gone one, two, three. Because that's how we should consume movies. Four, five, six, one, two, three. Star Wars reference. Very good Star Wars reference. I, I, Thank I, you. <laughs> yes. But because um, <laughs> I think he signed on to do Beverly Hills Cop five with Netflix. I think the, the it looks like they're going to be doing another one. Well, if it's the biggest movie on Netflix uh, this year, then of course it is. And, and, and it, the thing is, I saw an interview with uh, Eddie Murphy about the new one, and he, he basically uh, the the interviewer says, so what's it like for you to all be back in that, in, in that car? So you sliding in and with Taggart and Rosewood, and there's Axel, and I said, how do you feel? Business as usual! Yeah. And that is it. It is just a business. This is a business. Yeah, sure, he wants his movie to do well. That means that there's more uh, more cannoli. You know, there's more stuff coming in. It's it's. Yeah, and it does feel Eddie like um, Eddie Murphy's got a little bit of a um, like a contract with Netflix to maybe make a few films. Yeah, and I think because he did Dolomite, didn't he? It wasn't Dolomite on Netflix. I, do you know what? I, I'm not too sure, but yeah, that's brilliant. 
that's a brilliant film he's brilliant yeah, because it's that. a different film it's not a it, it's an original film <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly it's and an he, he, he gets idea. to actually be what said what eddie murphy is great at is being funny i mean he's an absolute genius comedian he is you know but and he, i mean straight out the door brilliant comedian yes as long as long as he's just playing one role <laughs> Yeah, well, that's part of the issue because Eddie Murphy is is obviously he's cool as well, and I think he's went away from trying to be the zany cool guy. Cool, yeah, you know, he end up being cool. I, I'm cool now. When he tr when he's a character, rather than you know like Axel Foley is cool. Yeah, but but Eddie Murphy, uh, you know, he, when you see him interviewed now, he, he's cool. He's a cool guy. I'm cool, and then when he gets to put the mask on of a completely different character you can let the eddie murphy out and be funny and brilliant yes. again but when it comes to this new beverly, beverly hills cop film it, he's being cool it's too busy trying to be cool than to be crazy cop funny thing does it, that make sense that, yeah there is a conflict but there's also age uh, added onto it and i don't know if you noticed but i felt I, I, I felt this, uh, this every scene where he came into the scene you could you can see that there's I, I, he's still wearing himself up to Axel Foley mode yeah and I think it takes him a while because it, uh, I, I just felt like he, he was like it was action slowly goes into the scene and then he goes <sighs> It's almost as if the, 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 it was. You can feel the age of him, like uh, the, the the serious undertone of of there being Eddie Murphy trying to trying to force it, yeah, rather than to actually just naturally glide into it. That's what the F stands for, Axel Forst. Axel, Axel Forst, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> of, of course, of course, they couldn't just call it Beverly Hills Cop Four. No. Axel F. Why? 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 Axel? Because Axel F was the name of the song from the first movie. That yeah. Dun, 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 mm. dun, it's called dun, dun. Axel F. Which, right? I know it's okay. it's 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 beautifully eighties. Yeah. But that theme keep coming in all the time. It, it just kept making me laugh. It came in at the wrong laugh. moments. It did. It was like it's like oh. it was an emotional undertone at one moment where it's like. Dun, 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 yeah, dun, dun, dun. it's like don't. I was, I was hoping there was going to be a funeral scene, and it was going to be. <laughs> which is, which is what they've they've done with uh, Beetlejuice, with. Uh, here I come, man. Me want to um, Yeah. Yeah. The, the whole, they they put that as a as a kind of a, a, a an under. Yeah, because you want it in like a big action scene yeah. to be ba 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 ba. You know, yeah. Axel Foley doing something crazy again by destroying the entire city. Great. Ba 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 ba. Yeah. But he's gonna be in a golf cart or or a, or a snow machine, snowmobile, or something, or a backhoe. Yeah. Right, so all those action scenes, they're just complete 80s, aren't they? they really, are, you know, yeah. like just absolutely, just just absolute no, chaos. Let, let's just talk about the whole uh, whole action idea of what we see in all of these movies, okay? Uh, from from bad guys with guns to to cars yep. to police car, police the whole police cars are disposable gag is is yeah. is, uh, is prevalent throughout the whole thing. You know, in, no yes. cop in that is is a hero. They, they they are all basically are banged up in hospital with with various car injuries. None of <laughs> yeah. them have airbags. Um, so yeah, the the, car, the police cars are always just uh, dominoes, just pointless uh, folly. Um, the vehicles that he chooses to drive are always ridiculous. He he's never actually doing it. There there is never a chase in a sports car. No, no. It's always something obscure. Yes, is that does that go for all the films? Or just all this the films one? from the very beginning. It was a, it was a uh, he was in the back of a truck, in the first one, the very first scene, yeah, the action yeah. scene, and and he's he's got his lucky strike uh, cigarette business, <laughs> <laughs> undercover, 
Um, and, and of course, he's just hanging on uh, in the second film uh, to uh, a big truck, and the third one, he's hanging on to everything, um, and, and including his career. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, and and yeah, and it's just like that's the gag. Then in the fourth one, let's make it a, s a snow machine, L you know. In in the fourth, what w there there are there are other vehicles that they could have used as well that that will appear like you know the little robot cleaner on the streets of of LA that yeah. they have now. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, they, there's going to be a chase scene with that in the next one, I'm sure. It'll be, you'll be on it going, whoa, you know, it'll be hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah, that's I mean that that's a trope. It's a trope. It's, it's it's something that you expect to see in Beverly Hills Cop is the uh, oh, okay. the, the, the the really bad vehicle chases, and they're they're funny, but they're, yeah, but they they're yeah, huh? Eh. They're not inventive. <laughs> they're not, but I, the the, orig the original ones were just a vehicle for Eddie Murphy to just do his quick talking thing, weren't they? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. They, you know, which he's not really doing in this fourth one because he's tired. Because he's a bit tired, isn't he? And the the prop that the, the one issue that that this movie has is that the the emotional cord has always been uh, a friend in Detroit is is killed. Yeah. The second one, I think it was uh, Bogomil is shot. Mm. Third one, the the goddamn police captain is sh is is shot dead in front of him. And the fourth one, of course, is about protecting his daughter, and that's because, yeah. and that's made it, it, it basically made it a trifecta of emotional issues that yeah. were present in the actual film, rather than having emotional issues that were uh, about him getting revenge. It's always been about revenge, or you know. So well, this one because it's it's a t it's also a little bit of a cliche, doesn't it? The um, of course. The, the the father and daughter have not taught spoken years and yeah. this disenfranchise this not disenfranchised. You weren't there for me. You weren't there for me, man. Well, I'm here for you now, damn it. It doesn't you know, matter. It, and uh, you know, it, you're a daughter and I'm a father. Good. Yeah. yeah well done. That's yeah. A, yeah. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, emotionally, it 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 basically is it, like I say, these films do not step outside of that blueprint of yeah of I, I guess what i'm trying to get at is like with the the first two films especially the all that other stuff all the bad action is is is, is great but it's a vehicle for eddie murphy to be eddie murphy and yes. to do quick talking and to do the his little bits where he'll go into somewhere he shouldn't go into and talk fast and end up you Blagging know his when his way he, through something like in his way yeah. through something, which is brilliant he did it and a couple of times in the last one. He but... sort of, uh, in, in this one. I mean, I kind of like this where he goes to the hotel and he puts on a, a voice, doesn't he? And he's about to go, you know what, I'm too tired, forget it. I'll just, I'll just pay for the room. Which is quite nice, but, you know, and basically the same way. We're getting old now, we can't do this. Yeah, but... it's lethal weapon, I'm too old for this shit, kind of. Uh, it kind of is, yeah, yeah, exactly. But what you want in a Beverly Hills Cop film is that stick. Here's Eddie Murphy doing the quick talk and yeah. all that. But... He does and, and like you rightly say he's tired yeah and you can tell you know you can tell there's uh, you know he's he's had it and you know but uh, he's still bringing in the money he's still bringing in the action mm. you know and even if the story doesn't hang on to anything that that we, we come to expect of him at least at least they're not bringing in another one they try. Oh, At least yeah. they're not bringing in the the wise cracking uh, yeah, protege. Chris you know? Yeah, like Chris Chris Tucker or something. Yeah. Well, if amazingly, Chris Rock was in the first film. Wow. He was a he had a, a very sp a bit part as a valet parking attendant. He goes, "You want me he to did. park this in there?" He did. And he, he, he wow. Yeah, that was him. That was Chris Rock, and it's like. Yeah, you could see that, that. that could have been an evolution. <laughs> if they naturally thought about it in 1984, they could have had a natural evolution, not realizing that Chris Rock was probably going to be the, the same. You know, I mean, the, the fact that he actually got to work with Eddie Murphy in 1984 
probably yeah. kick started his career because he thought, you know, that, w- that w- would have been a dream for him. Eddie Murphy would have been his idol. Yeah. So, you know. So there, there's, there's that. I mean, uh, there was, uh, I don't know if you know about this, but back in, nine th- uh, in, t- in 2013, there was a TV series. That I, yes, that I've never watched it, but I was aware you, of you it. You never watched it because it was never aired, but the, the pilot was leaked on YouTube. Is it and brilliant? The, uh, the premise. <laughs> Are yeah. you ready? Something goes wrong in Detroit and he has to go to Beverly Hills. No, no, no. Oh, what? Eddie, Eddie Murphy's son, Aaron Foley, wants to be a cop. And he, he's he, he wa- he's going to be a cop in Beverly Hills. Okay. And the the pilot's set up basically. I don't know. I don't know how he gets to Bev- why he's in Beverly Hills. But the thing is, the pilot's there. It, it's Aaron Foley. It's basically Axel Foley's son. So they've got. They they were probably going to have that f- uh, th- that funny cop there. But then the series producer says, "We're not going to go for comedy first. This is going to be a little bit more serious." Okay. Uh-uh, not Beverly Hills Cop. Um, yeah. They got Eddie Murphy to appear in the first pilot. Okay, he's there. I, wow. in his jacket and then later on he's without the jacket because obviously we're passing the torch here and then he walks out uh, y- walks out of the scene at the very end I've, I've just basically glanced the episode I haven't watched it so I don't know what happens but that's basically it right. Eddie Murphy w- w- uh, was said at the time that uh, they wanted him to pop in f- uh, as a reoccurring character in the series he goes what? I, I ain't gonna pop in I'm not popping in for this I'm not just gonna I'm not a popping in person you know, yeah. we, we basically. Uh, I know it sounds bad for me to do a. You know, is is it okay? Yeah, it's like that whole scene in the beginning of of Axel F. I mean, uh, is it okay? For yeah, it goes like it's to, to pretend. Yeah, to do but it's 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 you know you got to kind of put the character across, and that's there's nothing wrong with that. Um, yeah. So yeah, he he didn't want to be a, a a guy who just popped in for a TV series. This is you know he is he is the TV series. He is the man. He doesn't just mm. pop into anything. That's, yeah. That's that's his ego. Yeah. Uh, and apparently, when when they did a test viewing, they nobody wanted uh, Eddie Murphy in it anyway. Wow. And uh, it never went past the pilot. CBS right, squashed okay. it. There was a conflict of interest. Eddie Murphy obviously was 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 happy. W- he said it was a good it was a good pilot, but it was not, you know, it was not for him. It was not going to be his. He wasn't going to dr- carry it basically with his weight of his of his shoulders. No, okay. It's like it, you know, you you give that kid who's Aaron Foley a chance to to own it. Don't you know why why take that away from him by yeah. putting me in it? Or so that never happened. And uh, yeah. So that's so the narrative they're clearly not going with. So they've gone now. Well, with all right. Daughter we'll who's go a with lawyer. daughter who's a lawyer. Yeah. So they because they they would have looked at that series and thought, well, we're not going to have a daughter a, a daughter who's a cop. But, yeah, that'd be un- unthinkable. But she will look like a cop in that last scene with a gun. She yeah. handles it pretty well. She can get out of handcuffs. She does everything that that she would have done if she was a cop. I I, th- I said to you before we started doing this is like i watched it a monday night and i was like okay i woke up on tuesday couldn't remember really anything that had happened in it so i watched it again <laughs> wednesday night and then i remembered everything as it was going along i'm like oh yeah because i thought or maybe i was i was off thinking i was doing things watching in the background i was like no i did watch it because as i was watching it for the second time mm. i remembered everything that happened as i was watching it again but nothing in it was sticking in my head yeah. of anything remarkable i mean it was only the second time really i thought oh my god it's it's, it's joseph gordon levitt's in this as basil exposition you know <laughs> that's it yeah he is mr exposition and uh it's it's he, kind he of just, weird yeah. um because he's a big name now isn't he but he seems only there to just plug in some narrative gaps and like we say just be basil exposition so yeah, to to fill in the emotional, uh, to to basically create that connection between the daughter and the the father, so that they didn't have to say anything. He could, you know. Yeah, that's it. and uh, and then why? And then the the weird thing with now even Axe left would go. Have you two had intercourse? I know that's that's a, that's odd. Oh, there's my not even even. Of course, be honest. If it was Axel Foley, it's like, 
You got me fucking my daughter. <laughs> you know, it'd be something like that. Have you two it? been bumping ugly? No, he wouldn't say bumping uglies. He'd say he wouldn't say bumping uglies. <laughs> <laughs> bumping ugly. As you've cleverly done, and we shall get to the list in a minute. We know that he's not shy of the f word. He's and no one in the in the new in the new film, no one's shy of the f word. No, no. It's funny because you you can see how how language has changed since 1984, and how it kind of uh, there's like a curve. It's kind of funny, uh, but we'll we'll get to that definitely. Yeah. Um, but sp speaking of of char let, let, uh, all the characters who are in this, that there are a lot of bit parts. There yeah. Are a lot of bit parts that are kind of like just there for the hell of it. I yeah. mean, um, the good guy bad uh, bit parts. I mean, G Gordon Levitt, of course, he's there just to fill the gaps. To you got to have a, a a voice of sanity to kind of uh, to to progress the story along. Okay. Yeah. You had Bogomil in in the first couple. You had uh, you know uh, you've got you've got the typical uh, bumpkins who are kind of like the uh, the serious sidekicks who. Um, I'm very proud, actually, that with Taggart and, and Rosewood, in the last film, they didn't go to a strip joint and they didn't do anything with bananas. Yes. They mention it. They mention yeah. strip joint. They mention bananas, but they don't go there. Yeah. Which, okay, good. They didn't do the whole, this is Star Wars, we've got to put everything in there that people will remember from the first film. Yeah. Bit parts. Sarge. Sarge. Do we love yeah. Sarge? Yeah. I I don't mind him, but yeah, what I good. do mind is that the moment I saw him, I said, oh, they're going to do the line, aren't they? Yeah. Get out of town. No, I cannot. Yeah, Not only once, but out of twice here. in that one. Yeah. But that I thought, yeah, they could have subverted it. They could have actually had um, Sarge say, get out of town, and then Eddie Murphy go, no, I cannot. Just for the yeah. just for the hell of the subversion, just for mm. the sh for the sake of it, instead of actually, because then it was like, yeah, they said the line. Yeah. It's like it it was yeah it was which is okay it's nice but it's Th things are trying to be too down on it but you know it's it's like oh yeah 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 no I'm, I'm not trying to I'm just being honest about it like 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 it was good to see Tiger and Ro Rose Rosenwood Rosenwood yeah Rosenwood, Rosenwood. yeah Judge <clears> and. Uh, and and haggard. I mean, taggard. Yeah. Haggard. <laughs> but I didn't. I weren't keen on the whole taggart. He's he's gone back with his wife, but some that means he's miserable now. Oh, the old ball and chain back at home. Yeah, they thing. had to cast her this time. Uh, yeah, like, I just didn't she... like it. I thought it was just a bit. It's a bit of a dated thing to just have all oh, the bloody the wife at home, bringing me down all the time. I'm like, come on. Yeah. I mean, if you're updating it and we're saying, all right, we're in the modern world now, and they do a really good job in certain parts of that when we have those countless bloody scenes of him just driving around staring at things and reacting. Uh, oh, yeah, Daddy Murphy yeah. reacts. Really they, they film a lot of that. And they get yeah, the and it's like, and they just but some of it's it. quite good, do you know what I mean? Where it's like, um, there was one where a mum, like, sort of posing and it's his son filming her. Things like that, you yeah. know. I I, can't, I like stuff social like that. Social commentary you know? in those social scenes, commentary, yeah. which was really good, and I really enjoyed it. Well done, um, second unit for for pulling that off, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Well yeah. done, Eddie Murphy, for not knowing what he was reacting to when he filmed his bits. Yeah, because <laughs> it's the same expression every time. Like, yeah, we d we don't know how many of these we need, but we need one of surprise. We need one of of absurd. Uh, look, look, is always upset. Yeah, so they just got they had they had their stock footage of him. Yeah. So that and, and they matched in, it with in whatever. Detroit. It's basically people tend to go fuck himself. Yeah, that but was. In Beverly, but in Beverly Hills, it's just ridiculous people doing ridiculous things. Yeah, and that's you know, the like whole idea. pushing a pram with a dog in it and all that kind of stuff. So. Yeah, do dogs are in, in charge of everything. You know, being fed at the table and everything. And and it seems as though him driving around Detroit, everybody knows who he is. Yeah. And everybody's cool with that. You know. Yeah. Oh, there he is. Yeah, but wait till wait till he gets in a snowplow and destroys the city. Yeah, that then will be. <laughs> yeah, it's like business as usual. <laughs> yeah, oh, it's just him, isn't it? Doing that again. I'm going to have to quit. I'm going to have to quit to take the heat off you, Axel. I can't quit you. <laughs> <laughs> what well, is it? You know, and and kudos for them for not try not taking it out of Beverly Hills or doing something 
you know, like, like the third one, putting it in a theme park kind of took it out of the Beverly Hills yeah. feel. Yeah, it did. Even though it, they kind of ended up going back to the whole typical... I, I can't even remember what the gunfight was at the end of that one. I, I remember that everybody got shot, even the good guys. It was like to the point of absolute... It, unbel like you can't get shot that many times and still be walking about. It was that kind of thing where everyone was just getting shot all the time. He was squibbed up to cr to create, yeah. And let, let's talk about the the shooting. Bad guys and shooting guns. Yeah, not very good. Machine <laughs> guns that can that can actually blast through a, a solid stone pillar. Yet when Eddie Murphy's behind the pillar, it's it's a solid stone pillar. <laughs> yeah. See, right, this is what I want to talk about. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> action films rip, now. Yeah. <laughs> action films. Are, you can put some... You've got John Wick and, and Furiosa, the, like the Mad Max Fury Road films. Action films are brilliant now. Yes. And they're really well thought out. They're really well choreographed. You can't... Even though we're trying, okay, we're having 80s nostalgia, you can't have your cake and eat it. No, no, so no. So you can't do the 80s nostalgia, but updated and talk about, I'm trying to do a little bit of social commentary, but still have the bloody stormtroopers who miss every, everyone all the time. You, you, if you either do one or the other. Though. Yeah. Because it's do, like, do you get what I'm it, saying? It, 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 it basically, you're say, we're saying that Beverly Hills Cub exists in a, in a universe where real action can't exist. You can't have that fight. You can't have that that that. You can't have anything that's grounded in reality. In a Beverly Hills Cop film. Yeah, I, I'm guessing so. Okay. I just think because because like. But nobody's but but nobody's the, smart. The slickness in it, it's yeah, exactly. But the, the slickness and in invention of current blockbuster. Yeah. Action films, are at such a high standard now that. You know, it's either do that or or play to the strengths of of what you what the characters in the, the original in yeah, yeah. in the Beverly Hills are good at. Not trying to do both, you know. Yeah, trying to be funny, trying to be sneaky, trying to catch them out. Yeah. No, that's what they're good at. It's the sneakiness, it's the covertness. Yeah, and it's, as soon as it's, it becomes, I'm standing in front of you with a machine gun, and I'm going to miss every single one of my shots, yeah. even though you are literally right there in front of me, I'm still going to fire. Uh, they, they were they were in pursuit of the, of that truck with all the uh, the statues in it, right? Yeah, they were in pursuit. The, I, and I watched the bad guy shooting from the side of that car. He was aiming, not at the cabin. But at the at just at the, at the square of the truck, right? Yeah, that'll stop it. Trying to stop the vehicle. There's perfectly good tires that are actually moving that vehicle that c so easily could have been shot. No, no tires get blown out ever in these movies. No. Not one single tire, and yet we're expecting to think that these people are trained. Yeah, bad exactly. Guys. I mean, you yeah. don't just get a machine gun and say, I'm, 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 this is first, my first time using this. Every single bad guy in the movie has just basically picked up his very first spud gun and is, yeah. and, and, and they don't know how to use it. And that's, yeah. and, and it's like, well, it gets, t it gets tiring. It gets old very, f it, very fast. It does. And I guess what you want out of these films is instead of a big, you, obviously, you want the action, you want the cities being destroyed and all that, but you also want the Axel Foley using his wits and his quick mouth to get out of situations. Now, there's little bits of that, you know, like when he goes into yeah. Rosewood's apartment and they're in yes. there and he's like, pretends to be someone else, but it doesn't last that long. No, because they the, the, the cover gets blown and it seems to be yeah. that uh, he doesn't get away with it like he does, like in the, in the second one where he, where he, where he goes to that... Uh, uh, the architect, that builder, and says, "Your plans are wrong, man. These are wrong plans." And the guy goes, "They're they're the wrong plans." Oh my god, you're right. Yeah. Oh. It's like all yeah, of a yeah, sudden, yeah. It's it's great like scene, yeah. the acting is terrible. The actual, uh, uh, the idea of this guy, uh, uh, Eddie Murphy, just turning up and saying this. It's like, who are you? I don't know who you are, but no, I'm just going to believe everything you say and then just take all my men off the job and then leave. Yeah. And it's it, it's that, but. 
but you know it, it, it's it's almost as if that's what we wanted from this was that little bit of gullibility but the, but then it, it seems as though that in every Beverly Hills Cup movie everybody is pretty much dumb apart from that Eddie Murphy is the smartest kid in the block yeah how is that possible I know but what again it's a bit I know, but it's a vehicle for Eddie Murphy to do Eddie Murphy, isn't it? It is just a vehicle for him to just do uh, but, sketches. But, These and are I guess, just sketches. It's, yeah, it's absolutely. Sketch. And there's sketch. nothing wrong with that. There's nothing That's wrong with we'll, we'll do what Eddie does best, and then we'll clothe it in an action film. So we'll have action scene, action scene. Eddie does amazing, Eddie does amazing. Action scene, Eddie does amazing. At the end, everyone gets shot. Eddie survives. Every, Next yeah. film. It, it's, it's, but, yeah, yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's a that's a, that's a a good thing. But the bad guy Eddie's... Got, yeah. Yeah, but Eddie's not doing Eddie in this. No, 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 he's not. No, no. You know, it, there's little bits of it coming through. Because but it there's... doesn't work anymore. They've decided to subvert that expectation by saying that every time he tries to do cover, it doesn't work out. He doesn't and then get we have away to have with a... anything. Eddie Murphy, Exa- uh, yeah. He's got yeah, to and, uh, and then there's got to be a tired action scene following it. So he doesn't get away with in Rosewood's apartment because he gets found out very quickly, and then he runs away. But then, you know, obviously he's shown his age a little bit when he's running away, so he awkwardly gets down some stairs, and then, like you said, he'll get in a ridiculous vehicle, <laughs> and then a, a chase ensues, yeah. which is ridiculous. Oh, was then it a little bit... Pepper Spray Girl, wasn't it? With Pepper the, Spray Girl, with yeah. Her, with her silly little mobile, and, and it's like, surely that, I mean, the reality of Pepper Spray is that he would not be driving. He would be on the... No, I mean, yeah. But I thought that was quite funny, it was you know... Funny. Uh, yeah. yeah, he let his hair down a bit, you know, showed a bit of vulnerability, and he was, like, screaming, and yeah. I, I, I didn't mind, I actually laughed at that bit, but... Yeah, that's kind of true. Yeah, it's just... But he's <sighs> not. But that's it, he's not getting away with it, and people are turning on him Yeah, this movie too but, much. But, but I, I guess what I find slightly frustrating is because I, I, Dolomite is my name was not that long ago, it was only a few years ago, and I know Eddie can still do Eddie. Eddie's got the chops. He's still hilarious. He's still brilliant. He's so he it, could yeah. do it in this, but he just, he's coasting. Here we go. He's coasted through this film. Yeah, that's, you're right. It's, it's, it's not about, you know, and, and, and the thing is with Eddie, he is a businessman first and foremost. So he will just do, you know, he's getting paid to do a job. That, yeah, but, that, he, won't, that's, but he won't that's fight, the issue. but he's not fighting for it. He's not. I mean, he'll get his ad libs. He'll get his his ad libs as long as the scene is written as it is. He'll still get his ad libs in there. Yeah. But. But I think that's what it is. I keep going on to. Yeah, I think that's. It's basically this is just a paid gig. Dolomite is my name. Is clearly something he was passionate about because he really puts his all into it and he's brilliant in it and it's really funny, and it's got heart. And I very, very much urge you to watch it because it's a Definitely. very, very good film. I very, enjoy- I very much enjoyed it. Nice one. And it's just about this character. Who he tr- he's just trying anything to sort of get a bit famous, and he he tries stand up, and he ends up getting this character called Dolomite, and he ends up making a film, and you shoot this really crap B movie. I think it's based on a real character. It's based on a real story, and Eddie's brilliant in it. So I know he's got it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's the thing. Yeah. And I like Eddie Murphy a lot. I really, really like him. I, I, I like he stand up apart from the dated stuff that's in there, but you know it's a sign of the times. And and I like Golden Child and uh, Forty Eight yeah. Hours and Boomerang. all those things. When he, Trading yeah, places. when he, yeah, when he's just <laughs> let loose and he's doing his thing. That's it. His, his Saturday Night Live sketches are still some of the best Saturday Night Night Live sketches ever. He is pretty, yeah, exactly. And 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 that's that was the genius of him, and that's why people b- uh, bought the ticket. You know, that's why they mm. buy the ticket. But again, it's another film that they've done just to earn money. Yeah. They've not done it because we love this. Let's do something. We could either go really proper 80s nostalgia, we can update it, but it's... it's And it, you've just coasted through the entire thing. Like and Metro, it, I didn't Metro, not was like it, it. Was it Metro, another 90s flop that actually Yeah, flopped? Metro was, yeah. So, basically, his his career in the 90s... Is it, the the action hero stopped, and that's when when the uh, the the character, the multiple character syndrome began. Yeah. Because well, the, uh, and that's the that's the one good thing that I liked about the only good thing I liked about Beverly Hills Cop Three, other than Rose Rosewood and his green line thing was quite funny. 
and Rose yeah. getting having a, you know that was good that was great um, uh, but the action scene with Eddie Murphy on on that ride was actually pretty good yeah that was actually not bad action scene that was not a bad thing it was just everything else surrounding it and the actual layout of it and the, the lack of continuity with the whole th idea of what what his fish out of water thing is meant to actually represent was just lost yeah. and meaningless yeah but, but the, the, he still gave it his all he still did the best he could Sorry he did uh, yeah I, I you know I, I got a right pun in didn't it Beverly was caught too but I didn't it, think it was as bad as people I, made no. out for it to be I think the whole yeah uncle uh, whatever Dave Uncle Dave, uh, his connection yeah. to him was a bit false and flat, and uh, it yeah. could have been sewn in a little bit better because it just seemed like he really cared about this guy. How come we've never heard about him before? Kind of like feeling, and uh, but uh, it, it was just a yeah. I think it was just the wrong time, maybe for Beverly Hills Cop Three. It should maybe if it was a little bit earlier. It's the same with yeah. Die Hard. Die Hard had two movies that came out back to back this pretty much was the same Beverly Hills Cup 3 uh, w 1 and 2 were yeah. 84 and 87 sorry I can't believe I'm actually putting the heating on in July but I am doing wow you're cold <laughs> yeah can you believe it, <laughs> it must have been, yeah you've got big stone walls though haven't you, you you're, it's harder to warm up a yeah place. it gets cold in here very quickly yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> but yeah it's yeah 1 and 2 Again, same thing. As soon as the third one comes along, box office poison. Yeah. You know, it, it's 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 the rule of three. But the, yeah, the, but with the but Beverly Hills Cup three, they didn't try and do eighties nostalgia with it. It was just in the nineties. It was just trying to do a nineties action yes, flick. Yes, exactly. It was yeah. not that much different, and, and the, the theme was still there, but it was. Yeah. Over and over and over and over and over again. So they yeah. never over. They pepper sprayed their own soundtrack, basically. So, so if you had to rank these films, Ooh. I think I think they're in pretty good order. <laughs> One, two, three, four. <laughs> So we're saying Axel F was worse than worse than three, maybe, but, but that's because you have a you do have a genuine nostalgia for three because you saw it so often. Yeah, it and feels like it's. it's, it's I like think it got more of a pan than it deserved, even though I can see all the flaws in it. I really can. Yeah. But but I think this film, even though again I don't dislike it, it's just everybody coasted through it. There was no no heart. There's no soul. Yeah, exactly. It's... Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's like, yeah, we've got Taggart and Rosewood coming back, and they're old, and that's it. Paul, yeah, Paul and that's Rises, the joke. Paul Rise is in it, and yeah. he's old, and he looks old, and Eddie, Eddie Murphy still looks good. Yeah, and he makes a point to that, saying, can you believe we're the same age? Yeah, can you believe we're the same age? And it's like, that makes you feel sad. It does, but Eddie does look great, though. you got to give it yeah. to him. He looks great for his age. He does look good, but that that's just... Uh, yeah, but th those those genes are always good. I mean, uh, don't don't they all? I mean, Denzel Washington, come on, still look. Yeah. But but you know what? You don't have to be ageist. You don't have to have the jokes. You don't where need to make it all that age. Pills. Yeah, don't make it that age. Why not be in your sixties and seventies and still vital, still be, still be able to do things? Taggart's doing heart medicine and doing exercises and doing everything that you expect to to have as as an age shaming. Bit. So why not? Why not make a film like Beverly Hills Cop th Four, where it's not those jokes aren't in there. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how old they are because they're still running rings around people who are twenty years younger, thirty years younger than yeah. them. Yeah, and you have still to just you have to expect that they they've been existing between these movies. Yeah. For them to suddenly go into the fourth movie and then start saying, "Hey, you all look old," uh, as if they haven't seen each other since nineteen ninety four, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like the movie industry, you know, ta tackles racism and sexism and, you know, it, it, things are going in the right way. Very rarely, especially with, and the sexism comes into this quite a lot, but ageism is, is very rarely tackled. And especially when you get to um, actresses of a certain age, you don't then yes. suddenly not really getting cast, but you'll have a 50 year old bloke being cast with a 20 year old woman. Of course. You know Tom what I mean? Cruise. But why not? Why can't you just use a film that's using 80s nostalgia to say, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter you're Cruise this Jack age. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm not going there. Right. Look, Tom Cruise, eat your granddaughter out. 
Wow. <laughs> well, there you go, though. That's Tom Jones. I mean, Tom Jones. That's so. <laughs> well, well, that's Cruise. not usual to have Mission Impossible. Yeah, but Cruise is a great thing because everyone's like, oh, look, at how can he still do the things he does at his age? It's irrelevant. He's looked after himself. He could be. He exercises. Age. It yeah. doesn't matter. Now, at some point, maybe a certain point, there was that great film that uh, came out. It's got. Um, it's about. Oh, my God. I'm going to have to look it up. Look it up. Is it about think... old actors being bank robbers? No, no, Susan Sarandon. Susan Sarandon. And, uh, s- I have to put that in. Do, do, oh, sure, it was Susan Sarandon. Sorry, I had. Stepman. It was a new film that came out not too long ago. I mean, it may not even be Susan Sarandon, but yeah. But it, even if you have, uh, and it, and it Ben Ings in it. That's it. There you go. I mean, and it's always the, the group of women. And they're allowed to talk about age, but Eddie Murphy wouldn't be able to tell Meryl Streep, hey, you're old. Right, I think it was called Nyad. Was that it? Something for that. So it's a true story about um, uh, a woman. She was a, a long-distance swimmer. And I think she was trying to yes. swim maybe the Atlantic or something like that. So it was absolutely ridiculous. And she failed when she was young, and she can never let go of that. And she ended up doing it in her 70s. In yes. real. In the 70s. And I mean, so that's a great film of tackling ageism. And you've got a great avenue here to to have done that with Beverly Hills Cop and not make easy jokes about someone taking pills to do. Also, I can't take yeah. the kidney medicine with this medicine. Yeah, exactly. So I don't Am I worry, overthinking I... this? Am no, I overthinking this? No, you're not this? overthinking this. You're, you're doing exactly... Uh, that is exactly right. They they basically went for the low-hanging fruit. Yeah, like, they did. They're exactly. old. Therefore, we need to do old jokes, and that is the the obvious go-to. And everything about Axel F is an obvious go-to. Yeah, everything is an obvious go-to. The the daughter father relationship, the uh, old, new, the uh, the good cop, the bad cop, typical cliches of of you know Kevin Bacon is Kevin Bacon. Why cast him? Why? Exactly, because the moment you see Kevin Bacon sat there, you're like, he's a bad guy. <laughs> I just, I just think, oh, is. I ought to update my phone uh, service charge coverage, you know? Uh, yeah, yeah. Did you is watch it, it on your phone? <laughs> <laughs> Which network did you use, Andy? Ah, yeah. Tesco. Uh... <laughs> no, sorry. <laughs> but, the, yeah, it, it's it's all obvious that, you know, he was going to be the grease ball. And, of course, the ending of, of him having her in the house and come to me, bring the SD card. It's an SD card. <laughs> no, it's, it's, a, it's, the, it's no longer it's not the floppy disk or the microchip it's the SD card because people know what SD cards are yeah but no it exactly. wouldn't be, on, it wouldn't exactly be right. on an SD card nothing would just be on an SD card it's like, <laughs> okay yeah but you know it said bring the SD card I, I, wa- I want you yeah yeah flash drive bring me the flash drive <laughs> so yeah and it's like, come here, and we'll have the big fight out at the end, shoot out at the end. And of course, the 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 worst moment, the bit that made me think, oh no, they're doing it. He's about to shoot her. Eddie jumps in front. Oh, oh takes slow the bullet. motion. Yeah. I know spoilers, but come on. They could. They they they. Everything was painting by numbers. And it, it was, it was, and then they have to do the Lord of the Rings ending where it feels like it ends and it's got to end again. Oh yeah, because he got, yeah, it's like two, it was like one week it's later. Two, yeah, it's one week. Obviously, then he's trying to get his burger, and then he goes back, and then she goes back to the hospital, and it feels like it's going to end. Wouldn't it be and great then all of a sudden, it be great and then all of a sudden, Taggart and Rosewood are in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then obviously you think, well, that's the ending, and then. The ending is actually him in the back of the car with Taggart and Rosewood. Because they needed that scene. Yeah. That's promotion. That's just Yeah, well, that's really harking back to the very first film, isn't it? Just getting the back in the way it is. But but... then, don't you usually do that when 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 you're not going to do it ever again? Exactly. That's to tie it off. But, oh, hang on. It looks like it's making numbers. But they can't tie things off. let's let's, Let's commission a new one. Yeah, you can't undo with a vasectomy. Oh, hang on. Uh, try telling that to my dad that was a massive mistake <laughs> well he shouldn't have gone out that back alley like you know <laughs> Johnny Wishbone yeah <laughs> Johnny Wishbone 
<laughs> Johnny Wishbone. Oh. oh, right. So to get us out of this, I need I need lists, my friend. Yeah. I need lists. Do you know what? And and this this is gonna break the uh, censorship records. But I, uh, you can sum up the the, the style of, of movie, and, and and let's let's get this straight. A lot of people get. Uh, the reason why I looked up all this uh, profanity on the, in the movies was uh, to determine w that Beverly Hills Cop 1, the first one, was actually a, a still a 15. Yeah. Right? Everybody thinks it was an 18. It was like, I, mm. I did. I really I, did. Exactly. It feels like an 18. And why does it feel like an 18? Because the original uh, Beverly Hills Cop um, had this it, language in it. Okay, right. as well as a, a nudity. There was more nudity in the second one, but we're not here to talk about boobs. No. Or are we? 60 uses of the word fuck. Wow. 44 uses of shit. 19 as paired with bull. Bullshit. 12 uses of hell. 12 uses of ass. 3 paired with hole. You do the math. Yeah. <laughs> Nine uses of damn, three paired with God, five uses of dick, two uses of bitch, three uses of Christ, and two uses of Jesus Christ as exclamations. Wow. Okay, and that's the first film. So 60, 60 F words, uh, the, the highlight 60 F words, and 44 shit. And that's basically Eddie Murphy riffing. That's Eddie Murphy just, you know, yeah. just doing his thing. Yeah, which is what we want. Beverly Hills Cup 2. Had fewer fucks to give, had only 28 uses of the word fuck, 38 uses of the word shit, so we're, we're going down here. Um, 29 uses of hell, 26 uses of damn, 15 paired with god, 22 uses of ass, 1 used as asshole, uh, 8 uses of bitch, 2 used a, as a son of a bitch, 7 uses of dick, uh, 3 uses of tit. Wow. I didn't know tit was used, uh, 3 uses of Jesus. Uh, three uses of uh, paired with Jesus Christ, one use of Christ on its own, one use of bastard, and one use of screw. <laughs> that's like that's really important. Uh, the screw. Uh, and screw, that would probably screw you, man. You. Screw you. Yeah, screw um, you, man. But yeah, you so win there. we're looking at half the amount of uh, f words in the second one. Wow. Which surprises me. Now, Beverly Hills Cop 3, this is 1994. Okay, let's just also premise that you know, the, the, the first film was Martin Brass, the second film was Tony Scott, Mr. Action Blockbuster Top yeah. himself. Uh, Beverly Hills Cop 3 was directed by John Landis, American Wealth in London. Yeah. And, you know, I have to remember that now you said it. And, do you, oh, so, uh, incidentally, who cameoed in Beverly Hills Cop 3? Eddie Murphy steals a ride from a patron who's wearing a, 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 a Wonderland sweater. George Lucas. Oh, Lucas is in it, isn't Lucas he? Lucas is in this. Now, Lucas is a friend of Steven Spielberg, and John Landis and Steven Spielberg fell out because he murdered people in Twilight Zone, the movie. <laughs> <laughs> Allegedly. No, he wasn't murder. It, it was it, it, two people died uh, of, of a, a horrific holo, holo, uh, Holocaust accident. <laughs> Heli helicopter accident. Helicopter accident. Yeah. Um, in Twilight Zone, the movie, as you know, Victor Moreau was, yeah. was killed in a. In a, in a yeah, yeah. Um, so, John Landis didn't use a helicopter in his movie, but they used one in, in Axel F, which was very funny. Oh, hilarious. So, Beverly Hills Cup 3, 32 uses of the fuck. Five uses of motherfucker, 19 uses of shit, uh, one used as jack shit, 11 uses of hell, uh, 12 uses of damn, 7 paired with god, 4 uses of ass, 1 used as asshole, 3 uses of bitch, used as son of the bitch, 3 uses of oh my god, and 1 use of Jesus. Well, the Jesus has gone down. Jesus has gone down, but I mean, yeah. in, in 2 and I 3 mean, amounts to the same amount of F words in 1, so... Right. Wow. Okay. Ba, 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 ba. It's like the machine gun in number one. That's it. Yeah. And and that's, the, you know, when we talked about the fear. Yeah. We talked about you know a, a actors in the beginning of their career. There's that fear. So yeah. they they will give it as much as they they go for it. 
uh, yeah and also uh, yeah yeah definitely and then when you get told you're great for so much and a team of people telling you how great you are all the time yeah you lose that you lose that fear and things start to yeah. coast and then of course in 90s it was all about corporations and, and and you know keeping you know we need to keep that 15 certificate censorship censorship there was a lot of that and of course um, this has just come out, so the guy who actually did these profanity lists hasn't kind of got his finger out yet. He's too busy uh, watching all these other films to make sure that parents are aware. But he clocked, okay, over 200 plus F words in Axel F. What? 75 shits. Uh, 200 plus it said and, and I'm like no and this is on IMDB that's, that's not that's not right it's not right is it I can't no it was it's not there was there was F's in it I remember hearing them but uh, well well we need somebody <laughs> to watch the movie and do a count <laughs> I mean the, I wonder if, if Axel F the script is, is available to, to find because that's probably how they actually get their lists um yeah, I, I I remember the people saying it. But it wasn't that much, uh, cause I, so I think whoever did that account in that was was uh, it was a lie. Wow. So I don't think it's true, right? I've no, got I the don't. I've got the transcript here. Okay, scraps from the loft. Because it doesn't say really that 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 the language has changed. There, there are, there's definitely no nudity. No. There was none of that. no nudity, no strip joints. So, uh, so they've obviously got their act together when it comes to w women aren't going to be looked at as, as pieces of meat. That was pretty sure. There mm. were 96 references to, to an F word in the script. Yeah, 96. But well, the, these feel like these feel like though these were scripted fucks as opposed to rift fucks that Eddie would have done in eighty four. Yes, these were all scripted. Right. Uh, okay. Fly the fly the. F most of them were during the helicopter bit. Right. Okay. I can see. Uh, I basically I've got the script up and I can see where all the yellow is on the uh, script and it's pretty much. That whole helicopter sequ uh, sequence. Right. And that's kind of it. So, yeah, 96 uh, F words, okay, and 76 um, uh, S words. I don't know why I'm censoring myself all of a sudden, <laughs> considering. <laughs> I think I'm just realizing that I've got to put a lot of beeps into this uh, episode. Dun, that's dun, all. Dun, 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 dun. Every swear word go doom. Da, 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 da. Yeah, different note. Yeah. Oh, that's gonna be that's gonna be like a month of editing. No. <laughs> Don't tell me to do that. <laughs> so when it comes I, to cursing, that's the only thing they had hanging on here was was ninety six references f words and seventy six. So there's more swearing in this, but it didn't feel like it. It didn't no because like you say it was all coasted and. Dry, dry. Yeah. Again, no, it's not a bad film. It's not a bad film. It's enjoyable. And um... uh, yeah, imagine if you've never seen the first three films. You wouldn't. The... Get, you wouldn't really care about the the relationships. You wouldn't. And it'd be a very sort of bland, mediocre action flick. That's ca that's funny in parts. Yeah. yeah. It's. It doesn't hold up to. And that's why Netflix have all the other movies on here as well. But uh... yeah. So, th so there you have it. I mean, really, um, I, w w if if you come in wanting more, then you know he's got the same coat. He's hung yeah. on that coat. He, he, he's, he, we're saying that as a character, he hasn't changed. But I, I, again, with, with any character, as soon as they become a parent in a movie, as soon as they have a child, they change. Yeah. You know, John McClane, when he had a son and a daughter in the movies, changed. 
yeah. those movies didn't do well, they don't need to have their children in their uh, in their films. That's I think that's probably the biggest rule. Van Damme never had kids in his movie, right? In his movies. I'm not that I know of. Exactly. I've not, I've not. I've not really. I've not really kept kept up with the Van Damme. But no, when I think when you think about it, when you think about the uh, the whole minutia of, of 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 action movies. As soon as you involve your own children or wives, well, the wife, well, the wife trope was pretty heavy in Die Hard, and that worked well. Yeah. But as soon as children get involved, that's it. He had kids in Die Hard. That's what I'm saying. As soon as the yeah. kids are involved, the films are bad. Well, that's what made Die Hard Two quite good because there's no ki- there's that, no, that, no that reporter involved the kids and filmed the kids, and that's what took uh, Shirley MacLaine to punch that idiot. In the face. There's no kids. There was no kids. They do. They do. They involve kids. They involve the children. Oh, they the do. Phone. Oh yeah, yeah. They do. You do. Remember? You're, you're right. There. There's a phone call. Yeah. Yeah, and they, they, they interview the kids, and she sees it, and they said, "But we just want mummy to come home." Right. That is. Yeah. And and when you when you kind of think about it, that's kind of like a very. It, it's almost missable. But John McClane doesn't interact. No, and I think I think what you get at is good. It's when the the kids are growing up, and then you start to. It's when they can hold their own, and they're in their. Yeah, I, and they're sort of following the following yeah. the walking in the shoes of dad. Yeah, that things become. Because the icky. kid in Die Hard wasn't wasn't there in the, in the actual scenes. She was at home uh, with grandma. Yeah, because in yeah. fact, isn't isn't that part where listen, you let's talk to the kids, or I'm going to get. I'm going to get on to uh, Interpol or whatever. She says to the, 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 the lady who's babysitting the kids, yeah. who's clearly like Spanish or something, you know. Yeah, giving them too much sugar. Yeah. So, yeah. But I think it, the problem is, is like parents all... I mean, what is this? Like, she's grown up. She's a lawyer. Yeah. And But they've not spoken in years. We don't really know why. He's, he's sort of said that Absolutely. there was a... Um, Syndrome. There was a, a mafia thing in Detroit, and it was dangerous, so she had to get, he had to get them out, and couldn't see them because of this mafia gang in Detroit. Yeah. Very, very, very crowbarred in. Yeah, but uh, it, it only holds enough weight because you you've got to yeah you got to let the drama happen. Mm. That and that's it, and that's that. And so yeah, you're right. As soon as as soon as the kids get grown up and then become involved in the narrative. Yeah, and are interacting directly with our hero. Mm. That's when it becomes a problem, like yeah. it does in Die Hard Four and Five. Yeah, yeah. As soon as the kids are actually there. So there we go. Um, yeah, well, there, we, there we go. <laughs> Beverly Hills Cop, Axel F. You know, a couple of weeks ago we were going to be doing parody movies, and I yeah. watched, I watched Disaster Movie. Andy, when are we going to do the parody movies, man? Should we do that? I, I next? watched Disaster Movie. <laughs> you're a, you're a, you're a you. crazy man. I hate you. <laughs> is it that bad? We're going to do parody movies. Great. I'm going to watch Disaster Movie. This is going to be. This is. Yeah. So, Stephen? Well, Axel F came out. What? <laughs> <laughs> we're not gonna we're not gonna do it now that's it you're you're, you're you know but, but i watched this right i will watch disaster movie no, don't this do week it. Don't i'll watch it i know I'm, I'm gonna watch it i'm not letting you do this by yourself yeah i don't i don't think we should do a whole the whole podcast on it but but yeah i think we should definitely still do an episode on spoof films because that would be great i mean if you think about it beverly hills cop is a parody of action films when it you is. Really look at it. it it's it's honoring the, uh, the, the 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 comedy is honoring what action movies are. Yeah. And bad cops, bad bad people shooting guns at nothing. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, I guess I kind of really like the. Um... Instead of obviously you need to have the action scenes in, but occasionally instead of having the action scene, is him outwitting them by his his his, his mind and his wit. quick talk he's, and yeah, yeah his wit. Yeah. So that's that's what I like. So producers, next time if you're gonna do five, get those wide cracks in. Yeah. Get those payoffs in. I'll try and try and give Eddie the fear. 
Yeah. Make him make him yeah. scared. Say, look, if you don't improv, we're not going to pay you, and we're going to take your Netflix deal or deal away. Yeah. Man, he would riff like you wouldn't believe. Woody, Woody. Yeah. That's, That's Toy Story. Woody. <laughs> Very different movie. Um, yeah, a new one of them coming out soon as well. My God. I just have to say anything and it'll be coming out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. Like, aren't they, aren't they bringing out Goonies 2 or something? Or there was, Well, there's been talk of another Goonies film coming out for a long time. I don't know if it's actually happening, but... Yeah, I, 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 the thing is, I, I don't know. Do, do we need more? I mean, why was there no 48 hours pl after another 48 hours? It's like, uh, did, did yeah. anything... Oh, Beverly Hills Cop's where, it, where it's at. You know, this is it. Maybe, or maybe Nick Nolte's like, no, nah, yeah, I just want to be... I want to I want to get gruffer and gruffer. <laughs> yeah, because he never, he never like. I don't think he's a sequel kind of guy. Maybe that was the, his first sequel and thought nah i think what actually happened is like nick nolte's voice went so low that the human ear can't pick it up anymore well the range because hey ah! you know eddie eddie's up there and nook's down there and it was yeah. just giving the sound guys too much hard work yeah yeah read the script nick <laughs> well, i can't understand what he's saying how am i supposed to come up with quips like <laughs> no i've got i got I, I can't do i feel bad doing eddie murphy in no you can't do it it's wrong to do it it's wrong even though i did it earlier <laughs> it's like but you can't help yourself well it's because you work because he's cool man and and cool. and we're you want to you want to be cool <laughs> we're not cool not cool at all we're just basically two nerds on a podcast yeah yeah it just doesn't work two white people talk about Beverly. we shouldn't be allowed to even talk about the film really but but anyway axel f it's it's okay it's a good bit of 80s nostalgia it did give you a feeling while you're watching it that you could just press eject from your vhs at any moment and, and put, i'll pause the vhs and pause was never pause with vhs was it it was stutter it was yeah, it should, it should be called like La Cucaracha or something like bam, bam, bang, bam, 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 because everyone just starts dancing around the screen. But... It's weird, isn't it? True action. Now, here we go. They're making another lethal weapon and Mel Gibson's directing it. Get out of town. Apparently so. No, no, no. Get out of town. Uh, I will not. <laughs> I will not. Oh, oh you got to work on that, dude. <laughs> So anyway, yeah. So yeah, give it a watch. It's yeah. all right. It's not. It's not it's great. It's fine. It's all right. It's, it's fine. fine. It, it, yeah, if if which is the worst thing you can say about film? It's fine. It's if fine. it's awful, at least you know you something to discuss when you go. Ah, oh, it's all right. Yeah, that's this dead duck. Watch it. <laughs> it's very beige. Beige. Yes. Vanilla. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, uh, no worries. Uh, so thank you very much, uh, Mr. Um, Mr. Blockbuster himself, Andy Lewin. Yeah, that's, don't you forget it. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Um, German Experimental Theatre himself, Mr. Radford. <laughs> hey, I, I feel like it in this jacket. This yeah, is, look, yeah. Looking very, looking very suave. <laughs> Shut. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> get out of right. town. Hey, I will not. No, I will not. <laughs> What's the I will not. We're going to end this podcast now. Yeah, because we're just as bad as Beverly Hills Cop. Four, there's like a million endings to the podcast, <laughs> yeah. so we need to end it. Right, yeah. so yeah, watch it. It's okay. Bit of fluff. It'll, you know. It'll, it'll come out yeah, of the Yeah, it'll be all right. Yeah, it'll yeah. be okay. And if it's on Netflix, it's basically free, isn't it? So there you go. Yeah, there you go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Andy Lewin. You've been Thank great. you. That was a pleasure. You too. Let's go. Well done. Let's get out Bye. of here. Bye. Bye. I feel the need, the need for speed. Ow! Charlie, go to surf. This is fantasy. Oh, you betcha, yeah. Ooh, quit griping. I like griping. Oh. <laughs> I got a bad feeling about this. Well, life moves pretty fast. You don't stop and look around once in a while, you could miss it.